Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International weekly update. My name is Walton Pantland and I'm joined today by Lindsay Millen of Unite Scotland. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Thank you, Walton. So, Iceland was right, we were wrong, says the IMF. Instead of bailing out banks, Iceland forced them to absorb their losses. The result is that Iceland is already well on its way to recovering and rebalancing its economy away from the finance sector. This point was reinforced by Michael Hudson in a web conference we had with him this week. He stressed that the only way you can deal with a debt crisis is with debt write-downs and debt jubilees. You can't keep bailing out bad debt and throwing more good money after bad. So definitely a lesson there for some of our politicians. Um, unfortunately, Spain and the Eurozone don't appear to be listening to the example of Iceland. Lindsay, you've been following what's happening in Spain and it's not good news, is it? No, it's not. Um, unfortunately, Spain's economy is moving in the opposite direction to Iceland um, in direct co correlation to their opposite policies in dealing with the economic crisis. Um, its most economically important region, Catalonia, said it needed a major rescue from the government in Madrid, asking for €5 billion Euros to meet its debt costs this year. Um, recession deepens, GDP falls, and there's been a huge rush um, mm -hmm. by investors to pull their money out of banks, with deposits plunging from 1.583 to 1.509 trillion in July alone. Um, Spain has the industrialised world's highest job rate, with unemployment in the 16 to 24 year old bracket um, standing at 53 percent. Mm -hmm. And in the wake of this, many are turning to bottom-up initiatives to cope. Um, time banks, where people trade in time units, for instance, offering lifts to people from like to and from appointments in exchange for odd jobs and errands, um, have doubled to 291 in the past year, with members building strong community support networks. Also on the rise are barter markets, where people barter mm -hmm. goods. And these initiatives symbolise the philosophy to that the prices of goods and services should more closely closely reflect the labour that's gone into them. Um, and it's, it's with a wry smile that I note the objections of economics analysts who have said these measures deprive the government of legitimate taxes. It's very interesting and it's quite similar to what we saw in Argentina a decade ago when the economy collapsed there. And basically what happens when the centre collapses, the periphery gains more power as people start to, to look for alternatives. And um, we've certainly been following Spain and uh, the Spanish miners march, the Marcha Negra, and there's a lot of interesting things coming out of Spain. Um, for example, the um, Andalusian Workers' Union has started to occupy non-productive farms and grow food for people. Um, and uh, I believe they've also done supermarket raids where they've actually gone into supermarkets and taken food and filled trolleys and walked out and given the food to food banks to, to distribute to people. So it's quite interesting to see what the extreme austerity in Spain and other parts of Southern Europe is doing to the political settlements and how people are, are rejecting the status quo and finding ways to, uh, to look for alternatives. Now in, in South Africa, we reported last week about the Marikana massacre when 34 mine workers were shot by police at the Marikana Platinum Mine owned by Lonman. Um, now, 259 miners were also arrested on that day and we were absolutely horrified to learn that those miners have been charged by the South African Prosecuting Authority with murder. They've been charged with murdering their 34 colleagues who were clearly shot by the police, which for me is crazy. I don't know if you have a view on that, but I can't understand what the South African government's trying to do uh, with that particular move, but it doesn't look like um, lessons have been, have been learned there, does it? No, absolutely not. It's just ludicrous. Mm -hmm. No justice, no peace, and no piece of pizza, that is. Uh, this week, this is a week of action for workers at Palermo's Pizza in Wisconsin in the United States. They're in a long-running dispute with a company over poor conditions and union-busting tactics. Now, Palermo's is a large plant that makes packaged pizzas for other companies. And this week, Palermo's campaigners will target companies further up the supply chain, including Costco. So solidarity to Palermo's workers this week uh, in, in what is 
a pivotal week for the for their struggle and uh, we're all thinking about you and uh, sending best wishes from Union Solidarity International. Now, a woman's place is in a union, isn't it, Lindsay? Yes. Uh, Chile's leading trade union organisation, the United Federation of Workers, the CUT, voted last Friday to elect a new president. Barbara Figueroa, the Communist Party candidate, will be the first woman to lead the organisation. Um, it's a significant move left. Current president Arturo Martinez is a member of the Socialist Party and shows workers want a change in leadership and alternative representation. Um, the president-elect has been an active ally and demonstrator in Chile's student movement against profiteering in education, which has earned her the support of the student leader, Camila Vallejo, um, who is vice president of the Federation of Students of the University of Chile. Well, it's good news, and I think it's part of a, um, a whole raft of new trade, trade union women activists that we've seen, Frances O'Grady at the TUC and across the world, um, we're seeing more and more women active in the unions, which is a good thing uh, that the struggle is not quite over yet, is it, Lindsay? No, it's not. Um, I've been thinking a lot about the position of women in society recently, um, which has largely been prompted by a fantastic project I came across called the Everyday Sexism Project. The project's creator, Laura Bates, says the aim of the project is to disprove those who say sexism isn't a problem, um, that equality has been achieved and that women speaking out against sexism are either overreacting or just being humourless. Um, the project is using its website and its Twitter account to gather examples of everyday sexism and thousands of women have contributed their own experiences um, with the aim of proving Having all of these stories in the one place, the scale of the problem is much greater than many people think, and it shows that sexism is a serious issue that needs to be tackled. The stories collected show that sexism is endemic, um, socially, professionally and publicly, um, with stories ranging from abusive comments about maternity rights or women drivers or the length of a woman's skirt, all the way up to horrific accounts of physical assaults. With the entries in the one place, it becomes easier to draw correlations between these experiences um, and to recognise the same atmosphere, no matter how minor a comment may seem, you know, or how serious uh, an assault may be. Um, the project is amazing and it's gathering momentum with over 200 stories a day coming in from women all over the world. Um, I have contributed my own examples to those stories, um, including a charming experience from a trade union conference earlier in the year where a male delegate who I would say was probably around the age of 50 approached me and took me by the arm and said I hope you don't mind me saying this but red shoes which I was wearing are my kink. Now I'm still pissed off about this as I was too taken aback to retort at the time how would he feel if someone his age said something similar to his daughter or his niece um, it may seem insignificant to some people, but this comment reduced me to a sexualised object and no one has the right to do that. I would urge you to visit the website everydaysexism.com and read Laura's new series of Everyday Sexism blogs in The Independent. The more examples provided, the stronger the argument becomes and the less easy it is for people to say that sexism isn't a problem. Mm -hmm. So men, go to the website, read it and get women's perspective on what you think might be harmless comments. Women, go and put some of your own experiences up there and uh, share them with the rest of the world. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, back to Chile. Um, Lindsay mentioned the students' movement earlier, um, just to say that it's been a very, very powerful student movement which is uh, protesting and rejecting the free market model in education that was introduced by Pinochet and uh, demanding publicly funded education. And this week saw high school students occupying their schools as well as big protest march in, San in Santiago. Um, and the same struggle is happening in North America as well and indeed in, uh, across the world. Tuesday this week was the first day back in class for students in Montreal after the Quebec government cancelled the whole previous term due to widespread, widespread strike and boycott action by students protesting the corporatization of their education as well as repression of the right to protest. Students returned on Tuesday to find their campuses filled with riot police, uh, which they were not happy about. 31,500 of them remain on strike. That's all I have this week. Lindsay, do you have anything to add? Nothing more, not for this week. Once again, thank you for listening and watching this Union Solidarity International weekly update.